Hey guys, it's Mr. Fujito back here with uh, more 2D Unity tutorials, uh, making some 2D Minecraft. So you may notice I've got a new, uh, excuse me, that was my Facebook. Um, I've got a new script here in my scripts folder called Smooth Follow. Now this was made earlier in a previous 2D project and I figured, you know, why not just reuse it here instead of recoding the whole thing with you guys. So I'll put this up on Mediafire. Uh, and you can just download that. I'll, I'll just skim over it. Basically, it just follows the player with the damping time. So, so it gives like it kind of follow it follows the player rather than just like harshly staring at him per frame. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So, anyways, that's that. So we could put that on our camera, and now we need a target, and that's going to be our player. So let's open up Photoshop here again. Let's create a new sprite sheet and we'll call this SPR Entities. So like uh, the, the, the mobs and the player and everything. So in here we can make our character. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to make my character look. The first thing I'm going to do is map out 16 by 16. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 16. Okay. That does not look like 16 by 16. What happened to show all? Uh, what the hell? 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 16. Yeah, that's 16. Now, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Okay, so obviously I messed up there. My apologies. Let's just go with that for now. Okay. So, player. Uh, I'm actually going to find something online here. Let's go here and let's search. 2D 16-bit character. I don't know. We'll just base it off of something. These are not really 16-bit. Okay, we'll do 8-bit. Wait, I'll just do one. Rot MG. Rumble Mad God. Character. We'll just do uh, this one. We'll just do this one. Okay, so I'll move this over to my second screen and I'll re re uh, retexture it. Here we go. So view image. Let's go ahead and do this here. I'll just do it in black and then I'll recolor everything afterwards. One, two, three, one, two like that uh, like this like this as well this coming out right here and this going down all the way to the bottom And this is basically the outline of our wizard player. I think I'll just go like this. Maybe we can pretend that the magic wand is what's letting him randomly place blocks around. Okay, let's retexture. Let's do skin first. Skin, I don't know, something. Let's just do this. There we are. Excuse me, that was my Facebook again. And again. I will probably not have Facebook open during the next tutorial. Excuse me. 
Um, oh dear. Okay. That appears to be that there. Now let's go ahead and pick a brighter color. And go ahead and do this. And this. Okay, now let's pick a brown. So about there and about there. That's not a good brown. There we are. Okay, that's our player. So let's just copy him over and we'll create a sp uh, an animation through a sprite sheet. Just like that, like that, and like that. Okay, so I think I'm only going to animate his legs for this one. So let's go ahead and redo this here so like this and like this oh layer 2 like this and like this and let's just select this here and redo this then back to normal then back over the other way oh Okay, layer four. Why is it still selecting layer two? What is this? My gosh. Layer four. Okay, here we are. There we go, so his legs are moving. Da -da -da, he's super happy. Okay. That's our character there, so, file, save as, sbr underscore entities, save, and let's see if it messes up color scheme, it appears as if it has not, okay, so, multiple, again, packing, t or not packing tag, sorry, pixels to unit 16, filter mode, point, compressed colors, max size 128. Sprite editor. Let's go in here and just make sure correct proportions have been selected. Of course, another method of doing this is going slice and then choosing grid and going 1616. But I prefer this. Okay, here we are. So now we can create our player. If we select all of this, and then drag it in, it will actually automatically create an animation for us. So let's go ahead and do that. And there you go, it prompts us to make a new animation. So let's go ahead and create a new folder. Call this animations. And then we'll go here and we'll do player, no. Yeah, anim underscore player underscore walk. There we are. So let's rename this character here to player. Let's tag him as player. Sorting layer, add new. Player. And don't apply root motion. Make sure you deselect that because that'll mess around with the character controller when we make it. Okay, so here in controller, we want to make sure that walking is not the default animation. So let's create a new state let's set this as default now we want to create a parameter so that we know when to transition so let's create a parameter here that is a bool and we will say is walking or walking there we go so now make transition to here 
and make transition back to here. Now select the first transition and conditions down here from set walking. If walking is true, it will go here. And if walking is false, it will go back to idle. Okay, that sounds about good. Now if we go back to our scene view, wherever our player is, he appears to be behind the blocks. If his sorting layer is default, he'll appear above them. Okay, so let's set his Y to 2 or 3. Let's give him a Physics 2D box collider. And let's give him a Physics 2D rigid body with a fixed angle, of course. Okay, so now we will notice that he will drop to the ground. There we are, just as expected. Okay, now we want our camera. Now we want to set the target to our player. So let's drag our player into here for the target. And I'm just going to create a prefab for the camera and for the player. Okay, good. So now if we start the game, the camera will move towards the player and fall down with him. Okay, good. Uh, one more thing I forgot to mention. My standalone copy is in 1280 by 720. Yours will probably be in 1280 by 1024. So, or 1024 by 12, I don't know, something. Um, basically, go to, uh, if you want to change it, go to Edit, Project Settings, and Player. And then uncheck Default is Full Screen under Resolution and Presentation. And enter the units 1280 and 720. Personally, I also like to disable the Resolution dialog and disable Use Player Log. And just to be safe, I set only 16 by 9 to true for, for the supported aspect ratios. Okay. So let's go ahead and create a new script for our player. Create JavaScript character. Okay. Just going to fix this up here. So the first thing we want to do is create a variable. Actually, just create a private variable for the characters. Um, <coughs> sorry, the characters animation components. So, uh, equals animator function start. Actually, we'll do function awake character animator equals game object dot get component animator okay cool so now in the update function I don't think we even need start uh, one more thing we want to add actually another variable <clears throat> this will be var uh, speed, which is a float, and the, by default we can make it equal to three. Okay, so in function update, if input dot get key down, actually get key, key code dot a, something will happen, and then of course if input dot get key key code dot d something else will happen and then if input dot get key down key code dot space oops something else will happen okay so I just noticed we need to make another variable and we will call this one we'll make it a private variable grounded false so now we need to create a new function or enter a new function here function on trigger enter 2d with the parameters of a new variable we'll call collenter as in collider enter and it will be a collider 2d or collision to no collider 2d yeah <coughs> now within here uh, if 
clenter.gameobject.tag is if I actually put an exclamation mark at the beginning is equal to player so basically if it's not equal to player and that's what the exclamation mark does there tells us if it is not the following um, <coughs> then uh, grounded equals true and down here at the end of uh, kiko.space grounded will equal to false and one more thing function on trigger exit 2d call exit collider 2d if call exit dot game object dot tag player grounded equals false <laughs> not flashy false okay so under here for the jumping we want to add some sort of force that goes upwards for the rigid body oh somehow I google searched false while coding I don't know let me just close that there um, so in here basically we want to create a rigid body force that uh, pushes the player upwards so we will go var character rigid body game object dot get come actually you know what we could just go game object dot rigid body 2d dot add force vector 2 dot up times jump height actually so I'll create a new variable up here for jump height var jump height equals float by default 3 and what we want to do on start actually here is we want to actually multiply the jump height by about 100 so we can use small integers while entering it in the editor and then it will immediately put it to a uh, uh, like a normalized number for applying forces to the rigid body so we'll just do jump height equals jump height times 100 okay add force yeah it should be good and for input dot get key dot a we'll go game object dot transform dot position dot x minus equals speed times time dot delta time and also character animator dot set bool walking true and now here oh we gotta go else if let's move this down and then we'll do final else game object dot transform dot position dot x I accidentally did transform ignore that transform dot position dot x plus equals speed times time dot delta time and of course character animator dot set bool walking true and we'll go else uh, game object dot transform dot position dot x plus equals zero times time dot delta time just to make sure he's not moving anywhere and actually we'll just copy that line over and set true to false okay that should be good for our character controller right now so let's go ahead and apply that to our character are there any errors here implicit downcast from animator that's just a warning so we can go ahead and clear that smooth follow no character yeah I'll drag this over to our player and then we want to update the player prefab 
by going like this. Okay. Speed 3, jump height 3. Okay, sounds about good. So we could go ahead and play. As you notice, the character is moving around. La da da. Jump. He can jump. Oh, however, he can jump multiple times, which means the, the ground thing was ineffective, and obviously, because there are no triggers on the character. So let's go ahead on a scene view here. Let's quickly set to box, colli box Collider 2D to trigger. Let's set the X scale to 0 0.9, and this to 0 0.1, and then we can move it down to negative 0 0.5, and then we'll give him Physics 2D Circle Collider. And this one will not be as trigger. And this should work. Nope. Unfortunately, he's still jumping around. Let me quickly see what's going on here. I think maybe if I just went like this. If I remove this whole thing. Maybe that would fix it. Let's see here, grounded. True. Grounded is. F oh. Oh. I know exactly what I did wrong. Uh, we need to set this up. We need to make sure that grounded. If grounded. If he is grounded, he will be allowed to jump. So let's go ahead and cut this here. And paste it in here. There we go. Sorry for that mistake there. Now he can't jump multiple times. Okay, now one thing is when he's moving to the left, he's not facing the left, so he's technically walking backwards. So we could fix that easily here. Uh game object dot transform dot rotation dot y equals I believe 180 and game object dot transform dot rotation dot y equals zero and that should be good There we go. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so that's our character controller there with the smooth camera. Uh, thanks for watching this episode. Uh, I think it was a bit longer than the last one. So it might be split into two, I don't know. Anyways, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Uh, check out my channel, uh, Fujito and Soper Gaming and Whatnot, for some gaming and possibly some other Unity tutorials. Link will probably be in the description. Um, anyways, give a heads up to Boris, he's a bit busy, so that's why I'm kind of, uh, doing some tutorials for you guys, just so you don't get bored and so you have, uh, some things to learn. I mean, while he's away, because he's obviously the main, oh, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just rambling. Anyways, next episode, we can do some building and breaking blocks. Tune in for that, that one's going to be a fun one. See you guys later.